I'll move on to the the models that Crickwiz have. Uh, the, the, there was this one piece which I read uh, on Crickwiz and I, I particularly liked it. It was about uh, how Shubman Gill is one of the best timers of the cricket ball in the Indian circuit. That was one. The other was, and that, that actually fascinated me and I sort of disagreed with, was that uh, Sachin Tendulkar had more impact with the bat than Virat Kohli in the 2011 World Cup final. I remember there were a lot of quotes, uh, quote tweets on that. There were a lot of replies where people disagreed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, Sounds about right. So, so what? The, there are two things that I want to know. One, how do you measure certain kind of data? Like, how do you measure someone timing the ball well? That is one. The other is, uh, how do you develop these models where you had uh, the XR and the XW, which I think now you've taken off the website. So. How are these data models worked upon and how are they measured? These are the two things, because I think a lot of people still don't understand, probably because they're a little complex, that how do these uh, numbers come about? And that, I think that is also one of the reasons why people still don't sort of accept, uh, you know, the yeah. numbers that come out of Crickwiz. That is my understanding. I could be wrong, but, you know, no, I, I, th- I, th- I think you're bang on. I think I think you bang on. Um, yeah, the, the, the nature of being a company rather than hobbyists is that we do stuff behind closed doors and we present a lot of our stuff more so than most basically any of our competitors we present in terms of batting impacts being available for every single t20 innings apart from very recently when we've had to make some changes to the model and we didn't want it to be fluctuating within games when our technicians are working on it so we had to that that was a very practical pragmatic tweak that we had to make but by and large we try to put our stuff out there in terms of the results, but not the methodology, because, you know, at the end of the day, the methodology is how we make our living. It's how we put food on the table. If we just put it out there for everyone to nick, then we would be in trouble. So to, to a degree, it's that kind of pragmatism. The expected wickets um, stuff was a model developed by our, one of our data scientists, Imran Khan, who's yeah absolute genius. <laughs> he knows more about everything than I've, than anyone I've ever met. He's an amazing guy. Um, and he basically, he has a mathematical background and a physics background and he he knows everything that you would need to know in order to create these models and he's got access to data that no one else in the world has in terms of all this ball tracking data and so he's gone away and used his expertise to kind of construct that but then we've also got input from other data scientists with you know within and without that with from within and with outside the company and stuff so you've always got that kind of um a kind of broader conversation happening around the models and we're always trying to improve them they're not fixed so at one time um, the, the the model will have suggested something and then we'll make a tweak to it you know a couple of years down the line when we get the opportunity to and the mo- the, the impact model might spit out something slightly different it's not it's never very radically different but it might value you know we, we might have made some changes to our you know the value we place on wickets or the value we place on you know, aggregated um, kind of risk or all this kind of stuff, we in-game performance, ground venues, all this kind of stuff, which, you know, very, on, on one sense, very basic in the sense that we're kind of placing greater and weaker emphasis on certain factors, but it's also so many factors that it's hard to kind of constantly be conveying that to the public. And I think that's why I can understand why people maybe push back a little bit against the, you know, this black box producing a number. But at the same time, I like to think that because we are pushing the numbers out there, the results of these models all the time, the only reason that the expected wickets was taken off our app was because we don't get live ball tracking from India during the IPL and during the test series. So yeah, there was nothing to there was nothing to show. Um, so we just we couldn't we couldn't have that on the app as just an empty column. But it'll be back for the for the World Test Championship and for the England New Zealand series and for the for the rest of the summer. And the point is that people can go on and say, well, I've thought that Boomer bowled really well today. I thought he bowled incredibly well. Didn't get any wickets. You can go, they can go on and they can say, yeah, his expected wickets 1.9 in his opening spell. Gee, that's amazing. He should have taken two wickets and he didn't take any poor guy. You know, this guy's had a really unlucky day. Whereas if it was just a case of me kind of logging on at the end of the day and writing a blog saying, Oh, by the way, Boomer was unlucky. I think people have a different relationship with that. They're less likely to trust it. Hopefully, because it's you know we're putting the results of the models out all the time. I like to think that people can um, kind of grow a relationship, even if it's you know still skeptical. It can still be arm's length, but I like to think that we've kind of earned the right to be taken taken seriously and taken at face value. In terms of the recording of the data, like the timing stuff, that's something which our, our data scientist Sam Green developed over a couple of years ago now, and it's part of a, a group of of um, of, of 
it's a group of metrics called you know power attack and timing the three different ratings for batsmen and basically it's built off kind of shot type data and connection data recorded by analysts at the ground um we, t- we take that and we look at what you'd expect you know certain strokes in terms of the connection what we would expect the run value to be the wicket value to be um we do look at it in terms of you know the size of the ground what we'd expect in in different phases of the game against different bowlers um you know at, yeah, at different stages of the game and we you kind of we put all that together and compare it against each other essentially just as a form of ranking so you end up with you know uh, Rishabh Pant plays you know his attack rating is 160 which is higher than any other um, any any other player, and part one of the reasons why attack rating is better than attacking shot percentage is because attacking shot percentage could be you walking out into the middle at Lords or uh, at, um, at the Rose Bowl for the for the World, Ch- World Test Championship final. You face your first over, you hoik three, you play a three absolute massive hoiks over over mid off mid mid on. You just go trying to trying to clear long on, uh, but the other three you leave your attack. Uh, your attack percentage, your attack and shot percentage is 50%. Now, if you did that, same three shots in an alternative opening over, but then on the other three balls, you dabbed behind square, you were looking, you played a rotating shot and ran two really hard, and then you were trying to guide it behind square to, to take another two. You made contact, you played an attack, you didn't leave a single delivery, your attack and shot percentage is still 50% whereas attack rating takes into account, you know, the full range of strokes. So it kind of, it looks at the aggregated run value and wicket value for every stroke recorded basically in every game around the world for the last 15 years and uses that to kind of grade different strokes accordingly. Um, the timing rating is class because I, I, I love it because as you say, the, the Shubman Gill one was great because every, the one thing that everyone could see from Shubman coming into bat was like, okay, yeah, he's a bit slow. He's not the most attacking player. His attack, you know, his, his intent to use the phrase is, is low, but boy, he times it incredibly well. <laughs> and so actually being able to put a number on something like that, people trust it because they it backs up what they see with their eyes. They can see, you know, Shubman Girl times the ball impeccably. If I then look on Twitter and post, you know, his, his timing rating is 181, the highest of any Indian ever in the IPL, people understand it and people buy into it because it backs up. And then if you have a few of those, People aren't outraged when you throw one out there that disagrees with what they think, that kind of pushes back against what they see with their eyes. They're a bit more like, well, hang on, you know, I've seen five examples of where I agreed with this and one where I disagreed. I'm not just going to disregard the disagreeing case. I'm going to, to an extent, just go with it and, you know, maybe value this metric a little bit more highly than, than I did, you know, a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of tournaments ago. Yeah, it, it is it is hard because it is a bit abstract and it is, you know, it, 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 it doesn't immediately translate to to um to kind of common cricketing parlance but i like to think that you know we've been doing it for a couple of years now and i think people are placing a bit more trust in it particularly in t20 because i think people you know back us and and trust us to know what we're talking about i hope he says fingers crossed so basically you're saying even to measure the timing uh metric it's very similar to how there are devices on the ground that would measure ball tracking through cameras or through transducers etc and all that stuff uh, along with cameras right yeah, so it's a mix. It's a mixture of that with um, with shot type data, which is recorded by an analyst on site. So it's, there's a mixture of kind of subjectivity. At the end of the day, there's you know it's a person making a judgment, but it's a person whose job it is to make that judgment and is you know very well trained and understands what they're doing. And I, I hope that you know the, the consistency of the results over a long period of time kind of speak for themselves. I think um, so. I hope I hope that. Uh, we, we kind of get a bit more traction with that over the next coming years because I, I personally find it very interesting and very useful for my own analysis. Mm-hmm.